What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to, I'm going to go through the process of creating a model that I used over on my rendering channel to create a black and white rendering. So today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting the show on Patreon um, by checking out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the things I want to do a little bit more of on this channel is kind of tying things together across both uh, what I'm doing with the SketchUp Essentials, but also with what I'm doing on my rendering channel, which is the rendering essentials. And so I will link to that in the notes down below. But uh, basically that's a channel where I teach people how to use different 3D rendering softwares. So so recently I've been focusing a lot on V-Ray and I wanted to show you how I created a model that I'm using for a V-Ray rendering. So I was kind of recreating a photo I found online which is basically a spiral staircase in front of a wall um, and it's got some kind of cool shadows coming across it. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to try to recreate that or at least something similar to that in V-Ray and then use the rendering in order to uh, create those shadows. Well in this case what that means is I had to model out a spiral staircase the wall behind it and also all of the windows. So to start off what I did is I wanted to come in here with the rectangle tool and create the wall that the spiral staircase is going to stand in front of. And so in this case all we're going to do is we're going to use the rectangle tool. So you can tap the R key in order to activate that tool. Then I'm going to lock this to the green axis by tapping the left arrow key. And so what that allows me to do is that allows me to create a big wall that's going to kind of stand up um, behind my image. And so for now I'm just going to create a great big plane um, behind my default image. And you can see how I'm keeping my default model in here because it gives me a sense of scale. So that's modeled to scale. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use an extension that we've used before, and I'll link to some tutorials on this down below, but um, it's called 1001-Bit Tools. And so that extension basically has a ton of different tools that are really helpful for uh, like architectural and house modeling. So it's got tools in here to create things like spiral staircases, um, different stairs, it even has an escalator option in here, door frames, all that different kind of stuff. And so in this case what we're going to do is we're going to use the spiral stair function in order to create a spiral staircase that can then sit in front of our model. And so in order to do this, we're going to activate the spiral staircase tool within 1001-bit tools. And so what that does is that's going to generate a spiral staircase within your model. So you don't have to come in here and model it yourself. Um, and so that's going to save you a lot of time. And you can set things like the width and the angle, um, the different guidelines, stuff like that, um, in order to create your spiral staircase. And so what that's going to do is that's going to create this staircase for you. And you can set the height by adjusting the number of risers. One thing I will note though is this creates very geometry heavy stuff. So I tried to do this with 40 risers instead of 20 and this actually locked up my computer. So in this case I would reduce the number of risers that you're going to create. And I'm going to go ahead and click this so this can start creating this and then just copy the spiral staircase up a couple times in order to um, in order to get the height that you want out of your spiral staircase. All right, and so once you have your spiral staircase base piece completed, and uh, notice what I said before where um, you probably want to create this in little parts and pieces. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a component. So I'm just going to right click on it, and we can just call this something like spiral stair piece or something like that. And basically all we're going to do is we're just going to copy this up. So I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode in order to do this. So tap the M key to activate the move tool and then click on this point. And you can see how this is moving, but if I tap the control key, we'll put it in copy mode. And so one thing you're going to notice about your stair is it's not lined up properly. So with the move tool active, you can go up and click on one of these red little crosses in order to kind of rotate this so that it lines up more properly. So in this case, I would say it should be 180 degrees, but that doesn't look like it's lining up quite the way that I would like for it to line up. So we'll bring this back. It looks like maybe 60 degrees less, but basically you're just going to rotate this until everything lines up. And then you can just keep creating copies of this um, in order to kind of cover your whole wall. All 
Alright, so now what I have is I have a spiral staircase that covers my entire wall. And so the other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to model out my windows. And so my windows, I'm basically going to add two features in there. I'm going to add the windows themselves and I'm going to add some drapes behind them. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm actually going to draw guides so that I can set where my windows are going to be. And then from there, I'm gonna go in and actually model the windows themselves. And so in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna model the window. Um, a, I wanna start a new window about every step or every revolution of my st spiral staircase, um, especially just for kind of the look that I'm going for here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the tape measure tool in create guide mode and I'm gonna create guides on this face. And so to do that, you're just gonna click on the tape measure tool and then you see how there's a little plus next to the tape measure? That means it's in create guide mode, meaning when I click on this face, it's gonna create guides. And so you can see how I can click once on this bottom point and then move my mouse up to create a horizontal guide like this. Well, what I wanna do, and if that little plus button isn't on, by the way, just tap the control key in order to turn create guide mode on. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna inference up off this bottom line by clicking on the bottom line, then I'm gonna move my mouse up and I'm gonna hold the shift key in order to inference up to the top of this step. And so you can see what this does is this draws a line exactly to the top of this step. And in this case, what I'm gonna do in order to space these properly is I'm just gonna draw another line and I'm just gonna inference that up. I'm gonna hold the shift key to lock it to the blue axis, but I'm gonna inference that up to the top of the next step. So once this has been a full revolution. And so now I'm gonna do the same thing for my vertical line. And in this case, I'm just gonna draw a base point right here and then I'm just gonna click and I'm gonna draw another one and we'll say it's gonna be 10 feet off of that. And so what we have now is we have kind of a grid showing us where our two window locations are going to be. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a rectangle across this face. And so now I have kind of a face where I can start drawing my window. And remember that what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna come in here and we're gonna create this as a component. So we're gonna do a make component and we're gonna go ahead and call this window or window pair. And then we're gonna copy this up along this page, this face. So in this case, I'm using the move tool in copy mode in order to do that. So just tap the M key, click on this corner, and then tap the control key to move this up. And then you can type in times four and hit the enter key in order to copy that up multiple times. And now when I come in here and I start modeling each one of my windows, um, each one of those is gonna change. And for now, that's gonna be a little bit distracting, so I'm actually gonna undo that. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start modeling my windows. And so I'm gonna start off and I'm just gonna create a little guide here um, that gives me kind of a 12 inch gap because I'm gonna want a concrete piece between each row of windows. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna start modeling. And so what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna draw a line at the midpoint and then I'm gonna start roughing out my window opening. And so in this case, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a copy of this line over probably, we'll call it, we'll call it 12 inches over here. And then we'll do the same thing. Actually, we'll just model it over here for right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna model my window as a component. So in this case, it's kind of a component inside of a component. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just going to, first of all, I'm gonna push pull this back because you can see how these windows are kind of recessed. And I'm gonna go ahead and push pull this back something like 12 inches and we can adjust that in a minute. And then the way this window works, it has kind of a concrete piece in between these. So I'm just gonna draw a line across the center and then I'm gonna draw a line up, uh, we'll call it six inches. And then we'll draw a line down 12 inches. And then we'll just draw lines across this face. And then we can erase out this center line. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna push pull this out probably about six inches. So it kind of hangs out into your window opening. And then now we can come in here and model our actual windows. So in this case, I'm gonna use the offset tool again. And probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete out the bottom one and then I'm gonna make this top one a component. So I'm just gonna double click on this. Um, in order to select it, I'm gonna right click to make it a component. And I'm gonna call this window 
pane and hit OK. And then I'm just going to offset this probably about, we'll call it two inches. And we'll push pull this out just a little bit so that it has some thickness. So in this case, we'll go ahead and call that two inches as well. And then now I'm going to hit the escape key to drop out of that window pane. And I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy that down. So you can see how now both my window panes are copies of the same component. So if I was to adjust one, the other one would adjust as well. And then in this case, I'm just going to select, I'm going to go back inside this component. I'm going to select all of this. Actually, I'm going to delete this face out first. So I'm going to draw a line across the top to delete this out. And then I'm going to take all of this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make it a component and we'll call this window group. And we'll just make a copy of that across here. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to select this one line and move it over because I accidentally deleted the line creating that face. But you can see how now what I have is I have my window group in here. And you do have to be careful. Sometimes this will auto fill in the face and you just have to come in here and delete it. But now you can come in here, you can erase out this extra line and you can just copy this up. So I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode to copy this up. And I'm going to type in times four and hit the enter key. And I'm also going to create a copy of it going down. And so you may have to come in here and just kind of block out these faces. So now you've got your windows and you've also got your spiral staircase created. So if I was to come back in here and turn my shadows back on, um, we could adjust the way those shadows are gonna face in order to kind of match up with the photo. And then one other thing you can do is you can also go ahead and move your staircase over so it's more kind of in place. So now I've got my windows created, I've got my spiral stair created, I've got my shadows set up. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to create the drapes. So I'm gonna turn the shadows back off. And one thing that might make sense in this case, because we're gonna come in here and we're gonna model these drapes, is to go ahead and apply some kind of glass material to each one of these panes. So in this case, I'm just gonna pick the translucent glass gray. And that's just so we can see through and see what things are gonna look like. But now we're gonna go into one of these groups. It doesn't really matter which one, or one of these components. And so you're just gonna double click so that you're inside of it and we're gonna come in here and we're gonna model our drapes. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line a little bit back off of this. And I'm just gonna draw kind of a box. And so for right now, this is just gonna be its own face and you can go ahead and push pull this so it has a little bit of thickness. But what we wanna do is we wanna come in here on this box and we just wanna draw a series of arcs. And you can kind of vary the size of the arcs when you do this. So you're basically just creating the profile of what your drapes are gonna look like. So you can see what that did is that split this face into two pieces. Well now I'm gonna use the push pull tool in order to push pull this down. And so you can see how if I was to hide or if I was to look through this window, I've got kind of a drape look in here. Um, and the other thing you could do if you wanted to, if you only wanted this to be one face, is you could erase the lines on the back side. So that's an option as well. But we're gonna go ahead and select that and we're gonna make this a component as well. And we'll just call this drapes. And we'll make a copy of this so that we have a copy in front of the other window as well. So now if you look through these windows, you've got your drape sitting in here. And if you want to, you can come in here and if you don't want them to be straight up and down like this, you could come in here and you could select the arcs on the bottom and you could use the scale tool in order to kind of move those around to adjust the way that this looks so they don't look so uniform. Or you could also use an extension like Clothworks to really model out the drapes if you're super worried about those. And then finally, probably what I would do in this case is I would flip these on the other side. 
so that everything doesn't look quite exactly the same on each side. So now you have a model that has your spiral staircase, it has your windows with your drapes, and it's ready for you to go in and start texturing in V-Ray. So this video continues over on my rendering channel, The Rendering Essentials. I will link to the video down below. Um, basically in the next part of the tutorial, I go through um, texturing and setting up your lighting and setting up all your uh, different camera settings in order to create your render. So make sure you go check that out. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.